We saw Zambia's finance minister, uh, Situmbeko uh, Musokoltwane, saying today that Zambia is essentially being punished uh, for the failure by creditors uh, to come up with a debt restructuring plan going forward. Do you agree with that sentiment? And certainly, is it clear what is holding up those talks so far? Um, hi, Uche. Thank you so much for having me from uh, uh, Lusaka here. Well, I think um, I, I, I really wouldn't agree in terms of it being a punishment. I think from the onset, uh, we were very clear that uh, debt restructuring is actually a very, very complex process. So obviously, we did expect some kind of a delay, some kind of... A, um, you know, some 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 kind of setbacks in the entire process in itself. So, uh, in as much as you know, it is not something that uh, we did expect as a country. Uh, I think it's it's us basically paying for you know um, you know protracted periods of economic mismanagement. I think we 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 obviously had uh, you know some episodes of economic mismanagement as a country, and I think we are simply just paying back uh, you know uh, the dues in terms of that. Um, but I, I, but but otherwise, I must also state that. Uh, the situation is not a desirable one for Zambia, especially that uh, the success, you know, of this entire IMF bailout program is heavily dependent on seeing that, you know, obviously we create enough fiscal space through a successful restructuring process of our debt. Um, I think in terms of what is holding back uh, these conversations, I think... Um, it is a mix, uh, you know, of, of various reasons, and I think the most prominent reason, obviously, being the complexity of Zambia's creditors. You see that the creditors that Zambia has have actually, you know, actually include uh, quite a diverse uh, port 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 portfolio. You see that we have a mix of private creditors. We have, a, you know. A, a mix of bilateral as well, commercial lenders and all that. And I think satisfying the needs and requests of all those creditors has been one of the biggest challenges, you know, in, in trying to see the success of this uh, debt restructuring program. Mm. And of course, going back to that IMF uh, uh, deal, Zambia certainly needs it uh, right now. We've seen its currency plunging about 8% this year so far. Uh, inflation is also uh, at a monthly highs. So talk to us about how uh, these stalling in those talks are now affecting the country's economy uh, and impacting business confidence and activity, uh, which in turn, of course, is now affecting that IMF deal. Yeah, I think, yeah, it's quite evident, you know, the protracted uh, conversations around restructuring the country's debt are beginning to adversely affect the economy. Um, I must state that obviously, you know, it's, 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 it's a common fact that Zambia is an import dependent country. And of course, being import dependent means that we rely, that we rely heavily uh, on Forex, in this case, you know, being the US dollar. So once the quacha begins to depreciate, you know, uh, you know, a, against major global currencies like the US dollar, it means obviously it begins to feed directly into issues such as the cost of living, because you see that already we did remove subsidies from fuel. So this means that, uh, you know, as the as, as the quarter depreciates against the dollar, it means that, you know, the fuel pump prices become even higher. And that obviously feeds now into the cost of production, which ultimately also feeds into the price of commodities. And it becomes expensive for an ordinary Zambian, you know, to move uh, from one place to another to buy, you know, the, the basic food that they need to survive as a citizen. And I think you know, one of the biggest things that have actually caused such a depreciation in the kwacha is the fact that, you know, investor sentiments are very low on the international market. And this has really affected the kwacha's performance, obviously owing to the fact that, uh, the debt restructuring conversations have protracted for almost two years now. Mm. Now, looking forward, Peter, I think it is interesting that some think uh, that the IMF making that decision today to hold back on that disbursement, that might actually pile some pressure on creditors to finalize a restructuring uh, of Zambia's debt going forward. What is your take on that? Well, I think, yeah, some pressure, some kind of pressure will obviously be there, especially that, uh, you know, there is commitment from a number of creditors. We've seen various creditors, including commercial creditors, you know, being committed to seeing that, you know, Zambia does restructure uh, its debt, and they are looking forward to the finalization and the close of all this, uh, uh, you know, restructuring process. So I think, uh, you know, the fact that, you know, Zambia has been given a very, very tight or tough condition to say that uh, the only way we can obviously see a second disbursement from IMF is when, you know, debt restructuring conversations are concluded. I think this can obviously build some pressure because 
I must state that we have creditors that are actually concerned, creditors that are actually, uh, you know, also quite interested in seeing that Zambia does successfully complete debt treatment under the common framework. So I think some kind of pressure will obviously be built. But uh, in terms of how to deal with, uh, you know, creditors, some creditors that might not necessarily come through, that might still hold back to, due to various reasons, I think we just need to look for a way of how to ensure that they too come on board. Of course, through international assistance, I think we can obviously get this done. Mm. And I'd also like to take, get your take, uh, Peter, on how critical uh, that IMF disbursement is uh, for Zambia's economic uh, stability right now. Can Zambia do without that uh, disbursement? Well, I think the IMF disbursement is quite critical to Zambia's economic performance uh, because if, 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 if I must actually let you know that uh, the entire um, you know, IMF program, you know, this IMF program, including the entire reforms, economic and structural reforms, we are all designed hoping that we would get debt restructuring, um, you know, as soon as uh, we get on an IMF program. And of course, the accompanying uh, issue of, of this debt restructuring was obviously getting uh, such disbursements from the IMF. So consequently, we had to see how, as a country, would obviously increase social sector spending. Currently, Zambia has actually scaled up its social cash transfer program, you know, quite a lot and this is actually benefiting quite a number of citizens especially those that are in heavy poverty or in deep poverty so i think uh, this disbursement remains critical if we are to see that you know zambia reaps the benefits or rather achieves the objectives of an imf program of being on an imf program and ultimately also zambia you know reduces the poverty levels that uh, that the country does experience so i think this program remains really critical this disbursement rather remains very critical for zambia